We all know the IMO, or International Mathematical Olympiad, but you might wonder, how the heck do you get into the IMO? In America, it's basically a five-step process, and it all begins with the high school-level American Mathematics Competition. It's broken up into two divisions, the AMC 10 for 10th grade and below, and the AMC 12 for 12th grade and below. Each year, they have an A exam and a B exam. A lot of the questions are pretty straightforward, so today, we've got a double feature. We'll be taking on problems 10 and 11 from the 2010 AMC 12A exam. Problem 10 gives us the first four terms of an arithmetic sequence in terms of two variables, and we're asked to find the 2010th term of the sequence. Problem 11 is just a fun exercise with logarithms. Oh, and my coffee's ready. It's coffee time with Wrath of Math! There is nothing I'd rather be doing right now than solving this problem with you. Uh, let's do it. So, what is the problem? What's being asked of us? Well, remember, we've got the first four terms of an arithmetic sequence. They are P, 9, 3p minus q, and 3p plus q in that order. We want to find the 2010th term of the sequence. So here's the game plan. And of course, feel free to stop listening to me and just take this game plan and solve the problem yourself. The game plan is we want to use this information about the arithmetic sequence to solve for the first term, p, and to solve for the common difference between consecutive terms of the sequence. Then we can just add that common difference to the first term 2009 times in order to get us all the way to the 2010th term. So that's all there is to it. If you're familiar with arithmetic sequences, then you know this is a lot of information here to work with, these first four terms of the arithmetic sequence. Let's go ahead and write in red and start cracking into this bad boy. So how do arithmetic sequences work? Well, remember, an arithmetic sequence starts at some number, say 2, for example, and has a common difference between consecutive terms, say 5, for example. Then, for that example, the sequence would go like this, 2, and then 2 plus 5, so 7, and then 7 plus 5, so 12, 17, 22, and so on. There's a common difference between consecutive terms. So what does that mean with these terms of our sequence? What equation could we set up? Well, certainly, the difference between 9 and p, so the second term minus the first term, 9 minus p, must be equal to the fourth term minus the third term. Again, in an arithmetic sequence, consecutive terms have the same difference. So, this is 9 minus p, it's equal to 3p plus q, the fourth term, minus 3p minus q, the third term. And then we can go ahead and do a little bit of simplification here. We have that 9 minus p is equal to 3p minus 3p, which is 0, and then q minus negative q. That's q plus q, that's 2q. And note, now, both of these expressions, 9 minus p and 2q, those are both expressions for the common difference between consecutive terms of this sequence. So now the situation is, we've got this equation in two variables, p and q, so, of course, we need another equation in order to solve for the two variables. So, how could we set up another equation? Well, remember 2q, that is an expression for the common difference between consecutive terms of this sequence. So, what would happen if we add 2q to 9, the second term of the sequence? Well, necessarily, if we add 2q, the common difference, to 9, the second term of the sequence, that would give us the third term of the sequence, 3p minus q. So let's write that over here on the left. If we add 2q, the common difference between terms, to 9, the second term of the sequence, 9 plus 2q, that would have to get us to the third term of the sequence, 3p 
minus q. And then maybe we add q to both sides of this equation just to get all the q's on one side. So we have that 9 plus 3q is equal to 3p. All right, so now we got this equation and this equation. You might be familiar with a number of ways to solve a system of linear equations. If we multiply both sides of this one by 3, then we'll have 27 minus 3p. And we could combine that equation with this equation so that the p's cancel out and then we solve for q and then we plug it back in and then we solve for p. Let's do that. So let me show you what I'm talking about uh, in case you don't follow. What we can do is multiply both sides of this equation by 3. I'll just write that like this. This is not a formal notation. 3 times this whole equation. That's going to give us 27 minus 3p. 3 times 9, 3 times negative p, is equal to 6q. That's 2q times 3. Now, we can add this side of this equation to this side of this equation so that we have 3p minus 3p, and we get rid of the p's and then we can add this equal number, 6q, to the other side of this equation, and then we can solve for q. So let's go ahead and start writing that, maybe in green. I don't use the green very often, and oh, it's so squeaky. So let's write the 3p here on the left side. We'll have 3p plus, and then we're adding this side of the red equation, plus 27 minus 3p. And Yikes, looks like I'm running a little uh, low on room here. I guess we'll write it right here. This is equal to uh, 9 plus 3q, 9 plus 3q, plus this side of the red equation, so plus 6q. All right, now we just got to do a little simplification. We've got 3p plus minus 3p. That's just going to be 0, so we'll be left with 27 on the left side of the equation, but let's just go ahead and put 27 on the right side of the equation. So then on the other side, what we have left is 9 plus 3q plus 6q, that's 9 plus 9q. So I'll just write that as 9q plus 9, easy peasy. Subtract 9 from both sides, we have that 9q is equal to 27 minus 9, which is 18, and thus q is equal to 2. So what is the common difference between terms of this sequence? Well, remember, if when we subtracted 3p plus q from 3p minus q, that gave us 2q. That's the common difference. So the common difference, 2q, is equal to 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. Now we can go ahead and solve for p, the first term of the sequence. We can use this equation here, that 9 minus p is equal to 2q, and let's write that in blue. 9 minus p is equal to 2q, I'll just write that again here. We know that q is equal to 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so we have that 9 minus p is equal to 4, and so of course p is equal to 5. 9 minus 5 is equal to 4, and now we're ready to find the 2010th term of the sequence. All right, so what do we know now? We solved for p, p is equal to 5, that's the first term of the sequence, that's where we start with 5. Then, to get to the 2010th term of the sequence, we just have to add the common difference 2009 times to the first term of the sequence. So, we have to add 2009 copies of 2 times 2. 4. That's the common difference between the terms. 2009 times 4, what's that equal to? That's equal to 5 plus 8,036. That's 2009 times 4, and that's equal to 8,041. So if we have the first four terms of an arithmetic sequence as being p9, 3p minus q, and 3p plus q, the first term p must equal 5, the common difference between the terms must equal 4, and the 2010th term of the arithmetic sequence must be 8,041. There is nothing I'd rather be doing than solving this other problem with you. Let's do it. 
Ah, it's great to get two sips in the same episode. So here's what's going on. We're given that 7 to the power of x plus 7 is equal to 8 to the power of x. And we know that the solution to this equation, x equals something, can be written in this form of a log with base b of 7 to the power of 7. We are tasked with the objective of finding b. What must the base of that logarithm be? So what we have to do is solve this equation for x and get our solution in this sort of form so that we can identify what the base of the logarithm must be in the solution of this equation. Now, well, let's write in red, I guess. If you didn't know where to start, looking at this could give you a little bit of a hint when you see seven to the power of seven, and you might recall, hey, we could write this a different way, seven to the power of x plus seven. We could rewrite it as seven to the power of seven times seven to the power of x, and that's equal to eight to the power of x. That's by the addition rule of exponents. If we multiply the same bases together, we can add their exponents. So we can also go in the opposite direction and rewrite it like that. Then, natural thing to do would be to divide both sides of this equation by 7 to the power of x so that we get all the x's on one side of the equation. Let's go ahead and write that over on the left side for the next line. So we'd have 8 over 7, both of them to the power of x, which means we can just put them in parentheses and raise that whole thing to the power of x. On the other side of the equation, since we divided both sides by 7 to the power of x, we would just have 7 to the power of 7. And oh look, we're dangerously close now. We've got our variable x in the exponent. How can we bring it down? How can we solve for x in this situation? Well, that's what logarithms are for. In fact, if you're familiar enough with logarithms, you could stop right here, because what's this equation telling us? It's telling us that if we raise a base b to the power of x, we will get 7 to the power of 7. So here we see that base b must be 8 sevenths, because when we raise that to the power of x, we get 7 to the power of 7. So you could stop right there, but let's go ahead and take the log of both sides of this equation just to really finish things up. So now we want to take the logarithm of both sides of this equation with a base of 8 sevenths, because that's the base that our x variable in the exponent has. So that's the base we need for our logarithm. So we take the base 8 sevenths log of both sides of this equation. What have we got over here on the left? Remember how logarithms work? We can think of this like a question. It's asking, what do we have to raise the base of 8 sevenths to in order to get 8 sevenths to the power of x? Obviously, we got to raise 8 sevenths to the power of x to get 8 sevenths to the power of x. That's, of course, why we chose 8 sevenths as our base. So this would cancel out and we would just have x. And on the right side of the equation, we've got log base 8 sevenths of 7 to the power of 7. And we're basically done. We see that if 7 to the power of x plus 7 is equal to 8 to the power of x, then the solution of this equation, written as a logarithm of 7 to the power of 7, must have a base of 8 over 7. And so we have that b is equal to 8 over 7. And that's it. The end! Consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon for exclusive content and to help fuel his addiction to making math videos.